Check, check, check. Is it a little easier on the ears? Welcome to you. I uh, appreciate every one of you being here. My name is Mike Horn. I'm a lieutenant with the, uh, with the police department. I wear a number of different hats, um, and one of those hats is with, uh, with media relations, uh, which is why I'm here today, um, uh, basically to be here to uh, kind of MC the night. Um, I want to lay out a little bit about what the plan is uh, for tonight. Um, first and foremost, um, this, is, uh, this is not a hearing, um, anything like that. I was told before I came up here that there's a few people here that uh, were um, believe that this is actually a, a hearing and that, and that uh, there's like a decision being made tonight uh, regarding uh, the venue or anything else for that matter, and that is, that is not the case. Um, tonight, the purpose of this is basically have a conversation with the residents of the area in this particular uh, situation around Broadway and Dorsey. Uh, whenever we've had um, significant incidents that happen within the community, uh, we'd like to, um, as quickly as we can, uh, have an opportunity to speak directly uh, with the residents that are in that area uh, to, um, for them to hear from the police department and also to answer any possible questions uh, that we can. Um, the way this works is, uh, we'll be here, we'll answer as many as we can. There's some things that we just won't be able to address tonight for a number of different reasons, and we'll tell you that if that's the case. Um, the other thing is that um, there are a number of resources here in the room that if you have a particular issue, uh, we may point you to that particular person to speak with at the conclusion uh, of the evening. Um, so what will happen, uh, in just a minute, I'm gonna give just kind of an overview. Most of you have it already, um, but for those of you that uh, you know, don't uh, kind of provide a little bit of an overview of uh, uh, what happened that night, um, and then uh, we'll have uh, the chief will come up and say a few words. Uh, we've got one of our commanders who's been involved in um, the response to this as well. He will share uh, a little bit. And the city manager is going to um, uh, share some of his thoughts. And then we'll have an opportunity basically for uh, some question and answer um, at, the, uh, at the end of that. Um, the way uh, this works is this is an opportunity to have a conversation. It's going to be a respectful conversation. Uh, that's important, uh, and uh, that's the way that we'll, uh, we'll proceed tonight. I'm not anticipating any problems, uh, but just to be upfront, um, the expectation is that this is a respectful conversation uh, between everybody. All right? Um, basically, um, what happened that night, um, this, is a, this is a Friday night, and uh, over at the uh, clubhouse, um, the bar, it's actually uh, the horse and hound, uh, and the bar portion of that is, uh, is uh, the clubhouse. Uh, they had a concert uh, that, uh, that particular night, which is not uncommon. Um, and uh, about 11.30, um, we, just before that, uh, we have a number, uh, probably about 250-ish uh, people that are lined up outside the venue uh, there to get inside to hear an act. Um, and there were already about 200 people or so uh, inside inside the clubhouse at that time. Um, the line, for those of you that are um, familiar with that area, uh, the line basically went out uh, from the clubhouse where the entrance to the clubhouse is, if you're looking at it, to, uh, to the right or to the east, um, out towards uh, basically where the plasma center is uh, in that particular uh, lot. And there was just there was, there was a lot of people there who wanted to get in and, and, uh, and see the act. Um, there were a few people um, that um, had um, walked along the line and basically um, kind of began, began to uh, argue a little bit um, uh, with those. That's probably putting it a little bit, a little bit lightly. Um, but it was clear, uh, based on our investigation to, to this point, that um, there was some uh, pretty significant gang affiliation uh, with, these, uh, with these folks. Um, and as they were coming through the line, they were trying to engage uh, other people on the line. Um, and there was uh, some other uh, folks that were uh, a part of a, a rival gang uh, that were there also. And uh, they, began, they began to have a very heated uh, verbal exchange. Uh, during, uh, at one point in time, uh, basically, there's a display of a, uh, of a firearm. 
and um, conversation continues to escalate, uh, which leads to uh, what we believe is three different people uh, exchanging gunfire. At that time, um, as I just said, we had around 250, maybe 300 people on the outside, and so we had an exchange of gunfire um, with a lot of people right in that uh, uh, in that general area. Um, people obviously became very uh, chaotic, it's very, as I would expect, um, and uh, people started running in every different direction by, while the bullets are flying. Um, we had um, a total of, uh, that we know of at this point, uh, 16 people uh, that sustained injuries or were shot. Um, some of those were um, uh, kind of graze uh, type injuries, uh, some of those kind of, whoops, that's all right. Glad you can make it. <laughs> That's usually my role when I go to public function. Um, um, so several of those were graze injury, graze injury. Excuse me. Um, there were um, uh, two people who sustained uh, serious injuries. Uh, I believe uh, at this point that everybody is uh, everybody is out of the hospital. Um, the, uh, none of the injuries, obviously, and very fortunately, uh, were, uh, were life-threatening. So, uh, the shooting occurs, um, and just before the shooting happened, um, we had an officer who was responding to a call for service at the 7-Eleven, which is in that same parking lot as the, uh, as the clubhouse. And that was a uh, subject uh, disturbing uh, type call, a trespass uh, type issue. Uh, the officer pulled up, um, saw the um, uh, the large clap crowd uh, that was out there. He pulled into the uh, the 7-Eleven uh, and um, was beginning to get out of his vehicle to address that particular call for service when the shooting began. So he was out there at the same time. Um, that officer actually was the one that got the first two victims that approached us, uh, approached that, uh, that particular officer. Um, obviously, at this point, uh, we have a number of officers that um, responded to that. And in just a little bit, Commander Hale will give you some more uh, details on that. Um, one of those officers, uh, who was um, not too far from that area, uh, pulled over a vehicle that was leaving. and. Um, contacted three people inside that vehicle um, and uh, during the course of that contact uh, basically um, after some, some lengthy interviews and some other investigative uh, steps that took place approximately about five to six hours later uh, one of the people um, in that vehicle was arrested um, for his involvement with the shootings. Um, at that point, I believe we knew of 13 victims, uh, but since that time, uh, he has been charged uh, with 16 counts of aggravated assault and then one count of assisting a criminal street gang. Um, so that part, and, and he is currently being held uh, at one of the Maricopa County Jails uh, on a uh, $1 million cash-only bond. So he's currently, he is currently being held. The investigation is, is continuing uh, regarding uh, the other two, the other two suspects. Um, we're not going to be able to go into a lot of detail on that, other than just to say that the investigation uh, is progressing, um, and like we have said publicly, that uh, any assistance that the public can provide us, uh, we're interested in hearing from them, either directly to the police department um, or to silent witness, uh, where there are means in place to remain, uh, remain anonymous, if you'd like to do that. Um, that is uh, an important aspect of that. Uh, we are very, very much committed to uh, finding uh, these folks uh, that did the shooting that night. Make no mistake about that. The fact of the matter is, is that um, we recognize, and I'm sure you recognize, we're very fortunate that no one was killed. And the next time, um, whether it's in Tempe, whether it's in Phoenix, or Chandler, or Scottsdale, or Gilbert, or any other city for that matter, um, we may not be so fortunate. So we're very committed to that, and our investigators are working. Um, I know it's a cliche around the clock, but literally around the clock, uh, they do everything they can to find those guys. So we are working on that uh, right now uh, as we speak as well. 
Um, Commander Hale getting into some of the specifics. Also, some of the things that we have done uh, since that time is we have looked at uh, basically what was in operation that, that night um, as far as on behalf of um, the bar and uh, their security measures and uh, specifically were they specifically following uh, the security plan that was in place um, that, the, uh, that the business has with the police department. Um, and I'll let Commander Hale touch on that here in, uh, in just a little bit. Um, one thing I left off at the beginning as far as uh, the hearing, again, this is not a hearing. Um, this is not a, um, you know, there's no uh, just long-term decisions that are being made tonight. However, uh, for those of you that are here that would like that opportunity, um, on April 3rd, uh, I believe at 1.30, somebody help me with that? Yes, 1.30 in the afternoon, there's a public hearing having to do with uh, their use permit, um, and that is an opportunity for the public to come, similar to city council, to come and make public statements and that sort of thing. Um, so um, if you were coming tonight for that intended purpose, thinking that was happening tonight, that's a date to put on your calendar uh, for that, and that would be at city council chambers, um, again on April 3rd. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to the chief, and um, he can make, he'll make some comments. Um, after that, we'll turn it over to uh, Commander Kim Hale, um, and uh, he oversees uh, uh, Northside Patrol and a few other areas. Um, and then I'll come back up, um, introduce the city manager, and then we'll just kind of have a Q&A um, after that. So uh, right now, let me bring up our uh, police chief. Uh, this is uh, Tom Riff. Good evening. Um, let me just start by thanking all of you and Tempe residents and community members for coming here today. This is a very difficult situation for all of us. I recognize that. I've been monitoring closely what's happened within our community as a result of this tragic event. I understand there's a lot of different positions, a lot of different theories. Uh, I have heard different arguments as to was it a, a gang-related issue, was it a music issue, was it a venue issue. Um, finger pointing going on, who's at fault, why did it happen, how did it happen, there, it runs the gamut. There's no way, Chief, I'm going to get everybody to agree here tonight, and that's not our goal, but our goal is to be transparent and to give you some information as to where we're at in the police department and what our role is and what we are doing to keep this community safe. First, let me talk about what we're doing as an organization. Our police officers, men and women, in uniform that are out protecting our community to do a fabulous job. They're out there 24-7 putting their life on the line and they put forth 100% for professionalism at all times. The incident that we're dealing with that occurred a few nights back is the result of individuals, in part, that made a personal decision to engage in serious criminal behavior. And I don't think there's one person in this room here tonight that would, would support or uphold the behavior of those young men that came into our community and indiscriminately, without passion, without concern, chose to utilize deadly physical force on a group of young citizens that were at that venue to have a good time. That's the way I see it. And that's the way the Tempe Police Department sees it, and that's the way our elected officials and our city manager, the way we see it. So. What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do as a community? The fact that we have many police officers here tonight is merely a symbol of you as a community giving us the power and authority to serve you as police officers, and that's what we're trying to do here. I have put forth a lot of resources. We have detectives, officers working around the clock, as was stated earlier, with our primary goal is to, number one, arrest all the individuals that wreak havoc in our community. That's my primary goal here. Do we have other goals and other initiatives? Absolutely. The other is to figure out how did this happen, why did this happen, and where do we go from here? And that's what we're also trying to figure out. We're not here to point fingers. I think we all have been through that in our lives. All of us come from different perspectives. We know what happens when we point fingers. Our goal is to try to figure out why did this happen, and where do we go from here as a community? And, and simply put, we have a lot of work on our hands. Tempe is a vibrant community. I think if you take a look at the diversity in this room here today, a lot of different cultures, 
a lot of different ages. We have residents, we have some perhaps that may have come